service, all of the services, and your own services in London is the first opportunity I've had to speak in this service. All right. Hallelujah. So if you have your Bibles, I'd like to invite you to turn to Ephesians chapter 2. I want to take the, the opportunity to welcome this evening, this morning, rather, Sister Mary. You know, last week, uh, Brother Zion was here, and Brother um, Long, he brought his entire family. Yeah. Is that right, Brother Zion? Sister Mary and uh, Sister, I don't want to pronounce your name wrong, right? So I will just say sister. Alright? Praise God. And um, of course last week we had Ra Randy and his wife, um, Cassandra. So Zion, <laughs> I don't want to say get jealous, but just for this nice to have you all. Let me talk a little bit more about these folks. That are with us. Um, Samuel and Natalie. Oh, yeah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Nice to have all of the brethren that are in this room. And uh, if you're hearing me upstairs, nice to have you and as well as those on Facebook Live, nice to have all of you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. <clears throat> all right, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's stand for the reading of the word of the Lord. In this morning's message, um, I will stick to... <coughs> I will stick to keeping it a, um, an evangelistic message, but I will also talk to all of us as believers. Okay? I, I will end the message at a point um, where we can take it up next week again. Alright? So there will be a continuation or a part to, to this message. Alright. So let's pray. Father, we pause to give you thanks and to, to give you glory and honor for all that has gone on before. Thank you, dear Lord, for this great opportunity that we have to gather in your house and uh, to gather in your presence very importantly, to sing praises, to testify, to worship in special singing, and now to hear what you have to say to us. I pray the Lord that in as much as your word is settled forever in heaven, there is no change to it. I pray that Lord, you will send the anointing that will give us understanding. That we will understand this word this morning. Hallelujah. And uh, and the folks for, to which this message is targeted, which is all of us really, that it will reach us, that it will be clear, it will be simple, it will be practical. In the powerful name of the living Christ Jesus, amen and amen. So let us read together verse 10. We enjoy the testimonies of these two young converts. All right. Corporal, you next, eh? <laughs> All right. So, everybody found? Let's read together after three. Two, three. Oh, we are his good friendship. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. So I understand that upstairs 
you can see. However, um, something, say something, Sakadeo. Anybody there? Alright, so I don't know. Um, I hope that you see. I understand that you can see. Though you don't see, I say I cannot see the monitor. Alright, so let's go. This morning, <clears throat> I want to show you the practical steps that you need, that we all need to take in order to discover God's plan for life. God has a plan. A wonderful plan. An amazing plan. Hallelujah. And plan is not a bad thing. In fact, it is something that is encouraged. Because everything works according to plan. If you're building a house, you have to have a plan. There must be a plan to your life and to your living. Amen. 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 If you go for a loan at the bank, they will ask you for a business plan. Amen. Okay. Plan is not a bad idea. In fact, it is an excellent idea. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And God, I'm not going to say that God cannot be um, outdone because God actually gave the idea to the world. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. That a plan is important. And He has an amazing plan for every one of us. Yeah. Whether we're saved or unsaved, yeah. God has a plan for our lives. And this morning, I'm starting, or I'm going to show a bit of uh, um, uh, practical steps, some practical steps uh, that we need to take help to discover Amen. that plan. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. So to begin with, there are several scripture verses that we will uh, look at. So I encourage you to keep your Bibles at hand so you can uh, uh, follow with me and make sure that what I'm saying is right here in the Word of God. Amen. It is Bible based and you know in this church uh, we um, we we are Bible based, and with me personally, you know, I may I do not quote many other work or the work of men um, working in the writings and so on. But I stick as close as possible to this book. All right. <laughs> so it says, <clears throat> Hallelujah. Uh, so this scripture. Uh, and by the way, I, I am not opposed um, against anybody that may reference the work of others because uh, the, the commentaries and the, um, the, the statements and so on may have some relevance and may have some bearing. Amen. I'm just saying for me personally. Okay? So don't hold that against me. All right. So it's, I'm saying... <clears throat> That in this scripture, God through the Apostle Paul speaks about what God has done for us. Amen. Amen. Something that he has already done for us. Amen. I believe. Amen. 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 And uh, it is done through the death of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. But it can be realized Amen. in our lives Amen. only when we, we come Amen. into union Amen. with Amen. God Amen. in Christ Amen. Jesus. Amen. Amen. So this is a message that is relevant and applicable and germane Amen. to all believers and non-believers. So Paul says in the text that we just read, he says, for we are his workmanship. We are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus. Why? For good works, which God prepared beforehand. Hallelujah. That we should walk in them. Now, now, in that 
singular verse. The opening statement is mind blowing. It is mind boggling to me. It is an amazing statement. Which is this? He says, We are God's workmanship. From observation. I'm not going to ask you to look around now. But in your own eyes, mind, you can think of more than one person where you can put a question mark to that statement. Oh, really? Then, in your well, no, not <laughs> but where you live. That person? Or oh, that pastor? Really? And yet he says, we are his workmanship. We are his workmanship. Amen. Amen. So, here's this question. Whose workmanship? And what does this workmanship really mean? First of all, answer to the question, whose workmanship? God Almighty. Hallelujah. So as a believer, you can say, in fact, I'd like you to say this morning, put your left hand on your chest and lift your right hand. Um, if you could get the water out of the way. <laughs> Hallelujah. And say, I am God's workmanship. I am God's workmanship. Come to the person next to you, closest to you, front and behind you. Amen. Then you are God's workmanship. We are God's workmanship. Right. Now let's examine that word briefly. Amen. That word workmanship. It comes from the Greek word poema. Poema which you have heard uh, and some of you may be acquainted with, especially Greek students. You will know that uh, from the word poema, we get the English word poem. Poem. And what this suggests is uh, a creative masterpiece. A creative masterpiece. The work of an artist, a poet, a playwright, a sculptor. Somebody that sees and can do what the ordinary mind cannot see or do. A sculpture, a sculpture for example, would take an ordinary piece of lumber or bark or whatever it is. And whereas the ordinary mind will see that is fit to throw away and to burn, that person will see uh, something out of it. They will see a man out of it. They will see a work of art out of it. And they will take back, hallelujah, and create something. Is that right? So you understand it? Hallelujah. Amen. All of these people and much more will take uh, something uh, that is clearly and apparently, uh, evidently, uh, nothing useless, uh, hallelujah, and make something out of it, uh, something that is worth the while, uh, something that is valuable, hallelujah to the Lamb. Uh, and it kind of reminds me, I'm running ahead of my 
himself. Amen. But that is what God did for each and every one of us. Samuel, take a look at this. That is what God did for each and every one of us. Amen. My life was shattered. Hope was gone. Who could heal? Amen. And restore. But then out. Amen. Out of the dust. Hallelujah. I pray the Lord God. And he gave me something that is worth living for. Hallelujah. Something more than wealth or fame. He gave me something worth living for. What we are through, amen, in with through God, hallelujah. That is exactly what God has done for every believer, amen, in Christ Jesus, and that is exactly what He can do for every unbeliever, amen. If you would put your faith and trust and come. Confidence in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Amen. 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 So this is the first thing that you need to realize. That if you will put your faith in the Lord. If, if you will put your faith in God. Through Jesus Christ, that God will make a creative masterpiece out of you. Hallelujah. If you will put your faith in God through the Lord Jesus Christ, He will make something out of you and make your life worth living for. Are you with me? Are you? Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And amen. But hear this. It does not end there. Amen. It goes further. Hallelujah. Amen. Which we will talk about next week. But I'm, I'm kind of giving you a heads up on it. Hallelujah. It does not end there, believer. Amen. He wants to do something more and greater in your life. He wants to use you. Amen. To accomplish his work. To accomplish his plan. Amen. To carry out, to ex execute his special and unique work. Hallelujah. On this earth, he wants to make you an ambassador for him. We talk about that next week. But let's get back. Amen. And zero in on an evangelistic message. Hallelujah. And this is, this is, here it is. When I consider this matter, when I consider, and I tell you it's mind blowing, mind buckling to me, that when I consider where God took me out from, That the great creator. 
things uh, and all the wonderful uh, and beautiful uh, and glorious things uh, hallelujah that surround us uh, on this planet earth uh, hallelujah it amazes me that when he wanted uh, to make a masterpiece you're looking at a masterpiece when he wanted to make uh, a masterpiece Down, amen. He reached down, 
I said he reach. Hey, hallelujah. Amen. He reach down. Hallelujah. And he took that ugly, that unwanted, that uncompromising piece of trash, that uncompromising piece, hallelujah, of material that really was me and that it represents you and you to dear friend because nobody wants you, nobody really wants you, they're all putting you down, your friends and neighbors, all man fed up with, with you as they were fed up with some of we, are you hearing me, amen, I don't know what to do with him, he taking everything, I can't hide nothing again, the, 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 the cooking gas stank, I can't chop a little money, in, 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 under my pillow, they taking it at all, hallelujah, amen, man fell up with you, but he's reaching out, Amen. Right where you are. Hallelujah. Amen. And he's going to take you up. I said take you up. Lift you up. And up. Out of the mire. He lifted me up. Amen. The same can be 
done for you, my dear friend. Hallelujah. He is not a partial God. He is no respect of persons. Hallelujah. Amen. Whether color, creed, or race, financial status, or otherwise, he is no respect of persons. We all belong to that strap heap at one time, but he found us ovine. He found us and he took us up, held us in his hand and said, I am going to make a masterpiece out of you. Amen. When people see what I've done for you, it will blow their minds. Hallelujah. Amen. When they see my amazing power and how I've turned your life around. Hallelujah. They will say, Hallelujah. Look what the Lord has done. Amen. Look where he has brought you from. Hallelujah. The Lord. You yourself will testify that the things I used to do, I do them no more. The places I used to go, I go them no more. The things I used to say, I say them no more. Why? Amen. There's a great change in me. And how did that come about? He found me on that scrap heap. He took me up and said, I will make something out of you. A masterpiece. There's another side to that which I don't want to confuse you with except I will just mention it. In the days to come, in the years to come, in eternity, He will, he will put us in a sense on the shelving somewhere in His trophy room as trophies yes. and he will point to us yes. and tell the angels look what I have done I took a sinner and I made a saint I took a murderer and I made a child of God I took a funny kid and I took a and I made something out of that life. I took a drunkard and I made something, amen, into a pastor. I took something, amen, that was nothing. And look what I have done. He will point to us in time to come, in eternity. But we're not there as yet. We're not there yet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. While we are here, yes. He will start the work. Yes. I say He will start the work. Yes. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Yes. Something nothing yes. and make it to something. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. And I already referenced my life was shattered and hope was gone and who could do anything else? Yeah. Bro. Amen. Say it again. Amen. I was shattered yeah. and hope was gone. That's for you, friend. Oh and restore the out of the dust Oh God, give me Yeah. He'll do the same for you, my friend. He'll 
sitting for you upstairs and downstairs and wherever you under the hearing uh, of my within the hearing of my voice. Uh, hallelujah to the Lamb. Uh, amen. Uh, I say amen. Uh, hallelujah. Amen. 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 Uh, something uh, would live in so. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Who's my dad? So we only talk there about the workmanship and the poem. Let's move on to something else and hopefully I can stop on that. I'm saving five minutes. Which is this? You given me ten? Nice twenty now? Ten and ten? <laughs> Alright. Alright. I don't know who has more power in this to go sing this show, but a reverend go. <laughs> You're still the good man then. I want to say look at an important word. I told you we look at several scriptures, but we don't the time really has gone there. So next week we will continue on this. I want you to look at an important word there in the scripture. Look at it. It says that we are the workmanship of God. What's the next phrase? Created in Christ Jesus. And that's an important word that I'd like to highlight. I'd like us to zero in on that. Amen. I'd like us to take a hold of that word. Created. And notice it says, created in who? Created in who? Christ Jesus. Because you see, that work is not of us. That we can beat our chest. Now we can beat our chest and proudly proclaim what he has done for us. But never take the praise for ourselves. Because he is saying that this work is not your work. You knew nothing about it. And in a sense, you were inanimate because I took you up from the downhill just like that. And I made something over you. It is entirely and totally my work. But what he is saying here now, it is done. In Christ Jesus. So I want to hasten to add that if we are ever going to become what God wants us to become, it has to start with a creative act of God. But I thought I was created already. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We have to let God recreate us out of what we were and into what He wants us to be. Thank you. Scripture, Psalm 51. Scripture that I memorized many, many moons ago. Hallelujah. In Psalm 51, David, or Psalm 51, records a prayer of David. A prayer of David when he was brought face to face with a terrible sin that he had committed. And most of you, if not all of you, know of that sin. And if you don't, after the service, I can help you with it. Help you. How you to understand. He was brought face to face Yes. Nathan the prophet yes. had given him a parable. Yes. 
Amen. Yeah. Then the Bible says that David responded. A man like that should live. He should die. He should be stoned to death. He should be assassinated. We should take out a man like that. Later, looked at him in his eyes. Hallelujah. And with that, I mean, that finger when it came up, hallelujah, must have been ominous. But the words, hallelujah, what were really, amen, what would cut his heart. He said, amen to the king, thou art that man. Can you imagine? Sister Jenny, yeah. how dare you going to respond to that? Yeah. His response was for damage control. Yeah. His, he, he had the resources. He could have employed, amen, the entire ministry of information to cover it up, amen. But no sorry, amen. David's response was, have been caught hallelujah and uh, the thing about it uh, oh my god god had to say this man is a man after my own yeah, yes, yes. hallelujah so let, me, let me not get carried away with that yeah. let me focus on what, on what is germane to this text to this message hallelujah when it was brought to his attention and he came face to face with the terrible sin hallelujah in the night and ten verses hear what he says amen hallelujah and i'm reading from a different translation to the new king james hallelujah but you can still follow it is basically the same hear what he says hide thy face from my sins and blot out all of my iniquities and then he introduces that word created me a clean heart oh god and renew a right or steadfast spirit within me notice the cry of david was create create in me a clean heart oh god because david understood i'm sure that it would have taken a creative act of God to restore him. Hallelujah to the Lamb. And similarly I'm saying my dear friend, amen, that in our lives it will take a creative act of God to treat with and deal with the effects of sin, hallelujah, in the human heart and life, hallelujah to the Lamb, I say hallelujah to the Lamb, so I'll draw a conclusion quickly, which is this, when a sinner comes to God, amen, God does not reform that person, God does not improve on that person, hallelujah, he does not adjust the person's lifestyle, he doesn't take the nature of that rebellious, disobedient man, that nature, amen, and I'm not minimizing Sunday school or Bible school, he doesn't take it and say, well, you go to Bible school and you will see a change of come to the Aruka Worship Center, Sunday school. And you will see a transformation. No, 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 dear friend. That's not how God dealt with that issue. How he did he deal with it? God, by his almighty power, hallelujah, created him. And you, woo, hallelujah to the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 
It's not five minutes, my friend. No, no. Amen. So I give you the text. Hallelujah. Therefore, every man be in Christ. Second Corinthians 7, 7 and 5 and 17. Hallelujah. What does he say? Amen. Second Corinthians 5 17. He said, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, a new creation. All things have passed away. The old is gone and the new has come. Amen. I will pause with that with that quotation, with that um, quote of that text. Hallelujah. And just say what a glorious statement. What an amazing statement that when this is the Wendy that I was not in Christ and when I was not in him I was the scum of the earth and now he found me took me found me in the heap and took me and made a masterpiece out of me and look at what he says hallelujah you are now a new creation you are now a masterpiece hallelujah the old is gone the new has come hallelujah you need that friend you need that we need that all of us here hallelujah Hallelujah. How many times, let me talk to you directly, how many times have you said to yourself, if I could only start over? If only I could get a fresh start. <laughs> Hallelujah. How many times? Amen. You have said it. If I could start it all over again. Hallelujah. Amen. I've made a mess of my past. Hallelujah. I regret so many things that I've said and done. How many of us? Amen. You don't have to put up your hands. Hallelujah. Well, I'm sure I'm talking about some of us here in this room, if not all of us. And maybe upstairs as well. And in Facebook land. Hallelujah. Amen. But I have good news for you. And the good news for you is this. The good news of the gospel is this. That you can start over again. I don't much time off again on the earth 5, 10, 15, 50, 50 years again. I don't know. Hallelujah. Amen. But uh, the rest of your days on earth, uh, amen, can be exciting. The rest of your days on earth uh, can be amazing, uh, can be fulfilling. Uh, hallelujah. Can really be amazing, dear friend. Uh, hallelujah. Because, uh, because, my friend, uh, amen, uh, if you will come to God uh, and put your faith uh, in the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, hallelujah, he will make you a new creation. He will make you a brand new man. All things will pass away. And behold, you will be born again. Hallelujah. Not reincarnated, but born again. In terms of becoming a new creation. A new the spirit man. You will be able to say, the old is gone. And the new has come. Hallelujah. Amen. I say amen. And amen. Hallelujah. And for you who have already been born, have already been born again, you have already come to God through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Then you need to know and to understand what you are and who you are. What you are. Amen. Ah. Ah, a new creation. Hallelujah. And God has every intention of making a masterpiece out of you. I wish I could end up. Don't indulge you for the next five minutes, please. Please. And I'll close off with this. I'll close off with this. Hallelujah. Because I want us to look closely, to the best we can, as briefly as we can, to this.
process of the new creation. That creation that was described, or at least mentioned, because I will be read, but next week we'll read up to verse 20. You could do it when you go home as well. Hallelujah. Amen. What Paul described. And I'm telling you that there are three successive spaces, but we'll look at one today. In the interest of time, and as well as staying in context of the message. The first phase is this. Sin must be dealt with. Yeah. So pass it on good. But now we are talking about sin. And we talk about the problem. Because if you have unresolved problems, you can go forward. Think of, of it if you if you're married. And there are unresolved issues between you and your spouse. There is always that lingering doubt, that shadow of a doubt about this woman or that man. And Debbie, he come home five minutes late. You want many woman? <laughs> Sorry. Because it's unresolved. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Why must sin be dealt with? It's simple. Yeah. The simplicity of it is this. That sin serves as the great barrier between God and God. Yeah. Isaiah said your yeah. sin has separated you from God. Yes. 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 Yeah. It's a great barrier. And I'm going to show it to you. Yeah. As long as sin remains unresolved and undealt with in our lives, there will always be two major barriers. Yeah. Two major barriers. Number one. Yeah. We will have no access to God. Yeah. We might want to reach there, yeah. but there is a barrier yeah. Yeah. that prevents us from getting there. Yeah. Do you understand that? Yeah. We could do what we want. Yeah. We could do how much rituals, how much religious ceremonies, uh, hallelujah, we could feed the poor. Now I'm not saying that feeding the poor is uh, not in order, hallelujah, amen. amen. But we can do a lot of good works, uh, hallelujah, in an attempt uh, to reach God, but we will never reach Him, hallelujah, simply because of that great barrier called SIA. Yes. Yes. Amen. amen. So it must be dealt with. Yes. And the second thing, I told you two major barriers. One, we have no access to Him. And secondly, and this one really hurts me, man. And this is it. God has no access to us. Because sometimes we just see it one side, from our side, and which is right. But we also have to understand that no God has no access to us. So even though He wants to reach down. There is this big barrier. Amen. Hallelujah! Amen. I say hallelujah! Amen. Amen. So the way in which he needs to access us Amen. and to change us Amen. is to recreate our hearts and our lives. He needs to we need to change from within by a creative or may I say the creative act of God. That was dealt with my dear friend. 
when Christ came. I'm going to close the book on that. When Christ came, he took upon himself first of all sinful flesh. He condescended to men of low estate. He became a man and became obedient unto God even unto the death of the cross. Okay, there's somebody this weekend they were saying you think God could not call angels? Yes, he could. Yes. That will deliver him from all of the wrong and all of the sin. Yes. All of the judgment and all of the wickedness that was being meted out to him. But hey, guess what? He didn't. He didn't. Because there was a price to pay. There was a penalty to pay. For your sin. For your sin. And he willingly paid that price. And in exchange, he is offering us the forgiveness of sin and redemption from sin. So that whole question of that barrier can be removed now and permanently. Amen. Simply putting our trust in the finished work of the Lord, Jesus Christ. You know this, my friend. I do. Many, many years ago, several decades, I may even add, several decades ago, I made that decision. I decided I will follow Jesus. And no till the man. I was telling Brother Ryan yesterday, But God been dealing with my heart if he has a youngster as these guys. I didn't even reach double digit stage. I didn't even reach 10 years yet. And God was dealing with my heart. Yeah. He didn't understand it. But in fifth form in high school, I came in contact with him. Yeah. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. hallelujah. And although I had exposure to Christianity, I was not saved. My early childhood days was in a Christian environment. Yeah. Yeah. But I never knew what it was to be saved. Yeah. When I made that decision, yeah. form four going into form five. Vacation like this, what they call summer vacation. Not that, not like we have a permanent summer here. Right? You know what I mean? The August holidays now. Give your life to the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. A great change came into my life. Yeah. And from then to now, which is just a few decades. Right, huh? Yeah. <laughs> These knees. I've never bowed any other God to the Lord Jesus Christ. And these lips have never called on any other God but the Lord Jesus Christ. By no stretch of the imagination, hallelujah, was I perfect? Did you make mistakes? Multitudes of them, hallelujah. But I'm saying, my dear friend, hallelujah, I know that there is a risen Savior. I know that there is a forgiver who is the Lord Jesus Christ. I dealt, amen, hallelujah. In fact, I accepted, amen, that redemption, um, uh, th that payment, uh, amen, uh, that payment plan uh, that was effected by Christ uh, on the cross uh, when he paid the penalty 
and he redeemed me. I accepted it. And today, even though I had absolutely no plan to ever become a preacher, even though God at a tender age was saying, go and preach it to the world and tell people it. Hallelujah. I never understood it. Hallelujah. But today I stand doing what he has asked me to do many decades ago. Hallelujah. I'm saved and I know that I am. Hallelujah. And I'm, I know that heaven is my home. I know that Jesus is my savior. Hallelujah. And I will never be moved. Glory be to God. And I'm putting it to you. I'm suggesting to all each and everyone in this room and in upstairs and on Facebook land that what he has done for me and for many of us, multi countless millions, he will do the same for you if you will put your trust in him. Hallelujah. So I want to invite you to stand to your feet to this at this time. Upstairs, stand to your feet as well. If you would like this change in your life, our eyes are closed, our heads are bowed. Father, in the name of Jesus, I believe that you gave me this word. When I was asked earlier this week, to share. I believe this is what you put in my heart. And I've delivered it to your people. In this church here. Gathered in two different spaces. Downstairs and upstairs. I've delivered to those that are under the hear of my voice out there in Facebook. Father, save such as would be saved. I commit them in your hands. Our oh, eyes are closed, our heads are out. Is there somebody today that wants this change in your life? I want to ask you to put up your hand. Right where you are. Now, some of you have your hands lifted up and you're, you're praising. Continue, no problem. Hallelujah. I'm seeing one hand, I'm seeing two hands. Hallelujah. Is there somebody? Somehow, I'm seeing a third hand. Somehow, somehow, Holy Spirit, I'm seeing a hand that the Lord said, Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 This great church. Amen. You could put your hand down. You know who you are. No, unless you're praising God, keep your hands up. And you could continue to keep your hands up. Because of you have lifted your hands. Amen. I'm not going to ask you to come here now. But just where you are. No, upstairs I cannot see. And Facebook land I cannot see. But you know in your heart, you know yourself. Hallelujah. I'm going to lead you in a prayer a little bit. And I'll pray for you. Hallelujah. 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 It is now normal and regular with me that when we come to a point like this, uh, that we sing a nice little song that I learned, uh, amen, even, uh, even when I wasn't saved. And I sang it often, and now I see it, it may have so much meaning and so much relevance uh, and significance to my life. Join me as we sing into my heart. Hallelujah. And I want to ask those of you, especially, who have lifted your hands to get ready to pray. Into my heart.
Hallelujah. Thank you, Bishop, for being the the word of the Lord. Brethren, you know, when it comes to Christ, we cannot be indecisive. We accept him or reject him. The Bible says, he that believes will be saved. And he that believeth not will be condemned. You know, this morning our bishop has ministered the word of the Lord. I don't know what your heart's response would have been. But if you didn't respond to that word, don't let that fade out. Allow that word to ring aloud in your ear. Before time changes into an eternity, say yes to Jesus. Say yes to Jesus. Accept Him, receive Him, have eternal life. We don't have to perish. Choose eternal life through Christ Jesus. Thank you so much this morning, Bishop. We're getting ready to give of our substance unto you, Lord. Sister Grace, could I ask you to ask the Lord's blessing upon us and upon what we receive this morning? Amen. 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 Am